Good day, Knicks Nation. Today, you know, I was thinking about how, you know, we as New York Knicks, our team, has underperformed, obviously. And part of the reason for that is bad coaching and obviously a dysfunctional organization. What I've learned is good coaching, you know, the top coaches in the NBA, you know, your Eric Spolstras, your Budenholzers, your, you know, your top coaches, your Popoviches, uh, your, your Brandon Malones now, Doc Rivers even. What they, one of the things they have in common, I noticed, and maybe you've noticed it too, is they take what the players have, they use the strengths of the players to their advantage, and they seek to always put their players in positions where they can be the most successful. Okay? So if you have a player that's not a good jump shooter, you want to try to set him up so he doesn't have to take a lot of jump shots. If you have a player that doesn't handle the ball particularly well, you don't, you don't want to put him in a position where he has to be handling the ball in the open floor. Okay? They're able to analyze what the player's strengths are and put them in positions to take advantage of their strengths. That's what these great coaches have in common. Now, our last coach was David Fisdale. I had high hopes for David Fisdale because he had come out of the Miami system. And, you know, the Miami system with Pat Riley and Eric Spolstra, defensive-oriented system. No matter who plays for Miami, they're going to play defense. Sometimes they can't even shoot good, but they play defense. And every single year, they're in the conversation for the playoffs. Okay? This particular year, they're in the Eastern Conference Finals. So I was high. I think, man, he was, he comes out of that tree. Then he went to Memphis and they made the playoffs in his first season. They made the playoffs, the Memphis Grizzlies. Of course, they did have the grit and grind. He just stepped into a situation where they were already prepared, you know, with Marcus Saul and they had Mike Conley and he was more in his prime at that time. And they, they had our boy, um, Zebo from who used to be a Nick. Uh, and they, and they made the playoffs. They got bounced, I think, in the first round, but they did make the playoffs. They all collapsed in that second year and he got fired. I kind of discounted that. Thought, you know, Marcus all just didn't like him and the team just quit on him. Then he came to the Knicks. And from day one, things were off. His first initial press conference, he looks at Emmanuel Moutier, who we traded for. Six months prior. And said, we're going to get you right, kid. And then he proceeds to say that he's going to make Lance Thomas into Draymond Green. Needless to say, it wasn't a good season. And he played our players out of position. He couldn't stay with a set lineup. He didn't know how to utilize their strengths. Well, one of the guys that was lost in that one of a few was Damian Dotson. Six foot five, drafted out of University of Houston, 210 pounds. And from the first, his rookie, even the, I remember his initial summer league. If you look back, I remember that. And he played very well. He could hit a three pointer. He can play good defense. And he's still like that. And one of the things that's valued in the NBA are what we call three and D wing. What is that? A three and D. That's a person that generally plays the two or the three. They can play either one. They're versatile. They can consistently knock down a three point shot and they can consistently play very high level of defense uh, on their opponent's wings. And sometimes if they're very good, like Frank Nilakina, they can guard one through four, sometimes even five. So, Damien, though, he never got consistent minutes. Sometimes he played, sometimes he didn't, sometimes he got garbage time, sometimes he sat with DNPs, 
And I never understood it because I'm looking at the statistics. Okay. I'm looking at statistics for the New York Knicks on basketball in basketballreference.com. Okay. Now I'm looking like, I'm looking at five man combinations. The best five man combinations in terms of plus minus. Like, for example, Damian Dotson, with when he was paired with Kevin Knox, Frank Nilakina, Bobby Portis, and Mitchell Robinson, they played a total of about 70 minutes together, and they were plus 19.8. What does that mean? That means during the course of the 70 minutes that they played together, they outscored the opponent by almost 20 points. Then I looked at the four-man combinations. And in the four-man combinations... Damian Dotson, Kevin Knox, Frank Nilakina, and Bobby Portis out played 147 minutes together and outscored the opponents by 18 points. That was the best four men combination they had. You would think that, you know, somebody that's looking at stats would notice that. They looked at the three man combinations. And there he is again, Damian Dotson, Kevin Knox, and Bobby Portis. They outscored the opponents over 357 minutes by two and a half points. Matter of fact, in that same three-man combination, Frank, Kevin, Kevin, who we know is just learning how to play defense, and Bobby outscored the opponents by 8.4 points. Just side note. So I'm noticing that in all of these combinations, Dot keeps coming up as one of the better defenders, and not only just defenders, but in terms of positive outcomes in terms of outscoring, outscoring the opponent. He's he's there. Three man, four man, five man. This is from last year. And let's look at the year before, 2018 even. Just let's take a look. Just let's look at that and see what, what did we come up with that. You know, I suspect we're going to see these same characters. I suspect we're going to see the same guys. Let's see. Oh, look at this. Five man combinations dot Mario Hazonia, Frank, Mitchell Robinson, and, and Alonzo Trier all scored their opponents by 25 points in a five-man rotation. I mean, you'd think they would at least try this, right? At least, you know, if you have any, you know, if you're looking to try to win, you would try, right? Then you know, look at last year, the year before last, the four-year combinations. Dot, here he is again, Hardaway, Tim Hardaway, Frank, and Mitchell Robinson outscored the opponents by 10 points. Best, in, best on the team. That's the year before last. Okay? Then the three-man combinations. Dot, Mitchell, Robinson, and Trey. You, ever, you see, you, you're hearing some names over and over again. Dot, Frank, Mitchell, Robinson. They're out, well, in that particular year, the Knicks stunk on their three-man combinations. They were the best, and they were negative 1.5. You would think that somebody would look at this and say, you know, maybe we should play these combinations some more, include these kids. See, people look at individual statistics. I'm looking at what causes wins. I don't care if a guy scores two points. If he's on the floor and our team is winning, keep him on the floor. Okay, keep him on the floor. And Damien seems to be a guy, along with Frank, that when you put him on the floor, good things happen. Maybe you want to play that guy some more. See, I love the fact, the idea of us drafting Devin Vassell. And obviously, love the fact that you have RJ. But you got to put this, you got to give this guy some PT, man. Where is Damian Dotson? What's going on? You got to play this guy some more. And we're only paying him $2 million. See, this is the thing. What you want to do when you get rookies, if you're a smart team, is when you find some guys that can play, you play them a lot because the more they play, they're on their rookie deals. See, here's Mitchell Robinson sets the record for field goal percent, 74%. He's in the top 10 in block shots in his first two years. You see, and he's still in his rookie deal. So we got him for a discount. See, there's a number of players like that. I bet you I look through the league. There's a number of players still, like, for example, we know uh, Michael Porter Jr. is obviously still in his rookie deal, right? I bet you if I looked at Jason Tatum, he's still in his rookie deal. And look, he's like the MVP for the Celtics. So they're getting these guys maximum value in their rookie deals. Well, here, we're wasting. We done wasted three years of Damian Dotson. Wasted it. 
Okay. Bad coaching and dysfunctional organization. So what we can, what can we do? Well, I'm, I'm happy that we got a new organization, new front office, you know, with Leon Rose and, and, and Walt Perrin and, and, and Johnny Bryan and Mike Woodson and of course Tom Thibodeau, because now at least we have something that looks competent. Maybe we won't waste players careers like this, but I think with all the, Guys, we got coming in and all the guys we're talking about, like, you know, we talked about Kelly Oubre. We talked about other people coming in. Let us not forget. We may have a diamond in the rough on the bench in Damian Dotson. The statistics prove that when him and Kevin and, and Mitchell and Frank play together, they're pretty good. They're pretty good over the last two seasons. And those are seasons where the Knicks stunk. And they and they got positive outcomes when they're on the floor together. Maybe we should look at that. I dare some of y'all look it up. This is basketballreference.com. Look up the New York Knicks. Frank, Dot, Kevin, Mitchell. When they're on the floor together, good things happen, man. They, they play very well. They're among the best combinations we have as far as outcomes. You no know, five man, four man outcomes, three man outcomes. They're the best combinations we have. You know, Dot, Knox, Frank. Just so happen these are our young players. Imagine if they gave these guys like 30 minutes a night for the last two years. Where would we be? Well, I think they'd all be developed a little bit more, don't you? You know, it's interesting. So I'm feeling bad about Dame, but I'm hoping that they give our boy, you know, some, some opportunity because Damian Dotson's a solid NBA player. What I'm looking at when I see him, if he was developed properly, if he was in a decent organization, I'm looking at a 15 point a game score, a three and D 15 point a game score and a, and a solid defender. The, the stats prove it plus 19 in a five man combination. This is last year. It's last year. Okay. Plus 18 with four men, him, Frank, Knox, and Portis. Plus 18. I mean, what will we, you know, well, anyway, we got a new season. We got a new coach. We got a new front office. Hopefully this year, you know, we'll, we'll do some things. We may not need as many new players as we think. We may not. Because we, got, I mean, aside from the rookies we're going to draft, we got some guys that we just need to play. We just need to play and develop. Can we just looking at the stats, man? It just, it kind of shoots out at you when you look at the, the three man combination. Frank Knox, Portis plus eight this is from last year. Dotson Knox, Portis plus two and a half. They got Randall in there one, but he's, it's with him, Peyton and Robinson. They're plus seven. Plus seven. Okay. And that's what obviously Randall playing out of place. You know, they had him dribbling the ball up and trying to trying to play him like Draymond Green. It's crazy. But anyway, what do you guys think? Let's say free dot. That's what I say. Free dot. Keep dot, free dot. And let's get these guys playing together some because obviously the outcomes are pretty good. Peace.